Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, welcome back to the Pro Physique Code. Today it is your lifestyle series, peeps, and we have a special guest today. So this is Jess coming at you, um, and I'm here with Phil and Christina and Danica. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. I'm pretty good. I'm excited for today's topic. Yeah, today's Me too. Topic is, today's topic is actually like so good. So even if, you know, like we are a lifestyle series, but I think that this is a really important topic for just like anybody to listen to, but I, um, you know, we wanted everybody to kind of get to know us a little bit better. And we wanted to add a little bit of flair, um, personality to our podcast. Um, so we thought that we would start off with a very short kind of overview of a win and a want. So basically a win is, and this is our first time doing it, by the way, everybody. So if it's a big flop, then <laughs> that's what happens. I don't know. Um, but, you know, so a win is something that, you know, was really good from the last week or just like a highlight, whatever. It does not have to be fitness related. And then a want is like a um, goal or an affirmation or something um, that you like learned from the previous week kind of moving forward. So um, I'll go first. So a win for me is I actually feel like a decent human being again. I was sick for like a week and a half and I don't get sick for that long. I don't know what was going on with me. It was actually really hard. I was... <laughs> It's like mentally struggling. Um, but I actually feel super good. And Monday and Tuesday, um, I had fantastic training sessions. So that was my win. Yay. Uh, and a want is all of this stuff. If you're watching on YouTube, which you're probably not, um, all this stuff behind me, I need to pack that before I go away this weekend because I'm moving. I mean, not this weekend. I'm you not are. moving. Yeah. Um, in a month, holy crap in a month. Um, so like my goal is to start packing up my office. Cause I have a whole bunch of like random stuff. I'm like moving, um, behind me. <laughs> uh, but that's my want. I want to pack. That is my like intention, but we'll see next week. If it's still here, you'll know. And we'll pick on you for it. And yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, that was your loss. <laughs> Uh, Christina, why did, oh, oh, sorry, Phil, go ahead. <laughs> so, um, for, for me, a win actually came from this past weekend. Um, so I got to go into what I felt like was my super dad mode and I love doing that kind of shit. So it was getting Jesse's crib taken down. Cause he's two and a half now and getting him into his big boy bed. Um, oh my God. Yeah, and he's he's obsessed with Jeeps. So we've got the Jeep bed with the lights on it, and he is just over the moon. That's um, so cool. So I'm I'm sure, uh, especially Danica and Christina, y'all can relate to this. The fact that he actually didn't get out of bed his first night out of the crib, huge win. Right? Like I actually got good sleep that night because he wasn't <laughs> getting stuck sideways in the crib anymore. So. You know, between that, getting to do some maintenance on, on our vehicles, changing spark plugs, oil changes, and getting a workout in, and grilling an amazing tomahawk, the weekend was my win, simply put. Um, as you far as... the meat off of the bone? Like... Because like, the tomahawk steak is like the one with the bone in. Oh, shit. Yeah, no, that's the T-bone steak. No, 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 no. No, you're... So both... Both are yes. Um, so a T-bone and a porterhouse are very, very similar. They, it's just a matter of the porterhouse has a larger fillet on it. They both still have the, the strip on one side. Um, the, um, so the T-bone has a smaller fillet, usually a smaller tenderloin. Okay. But a tomahawk has a really long bone because that's where you have a lot of juice and marrow stored. So as it's cooking, it's making a juicier steak and you're actually getting some of the, um, also some of the nutrients found in that bone marrow as well. So it just creates a lot more tender steak. It's amazing. Um, oh my God. Do you eat it off the bone? Yeah. But I, do you I, 
Oh, like that? Yeah. Oh, I totally caveman. Okay, Vic that. only Good. orders those, and then like at a restaurant, and he'll like pick it up. I'm like, oh. I'll <laughs> do that at a restaurant. Like, Stop it! <laughs> you got I do to that. like what? What you pay for a tomahawk? You better get every last morsel off of that thing. Right, he's listening and he's agreeing with you right now. I promise. It's so good. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah. that that was my win. Cool. Was I like it. Dad mode. Uh, got in workout. Everything like nice weekend. Plus my bucks won opening weekend. Um, then a want for me for this coming week is. I've actually not been able to consistently get my cardio in. So that is my want for the week is to get all five of my 30 minute sessions in. Um, as we're recording this on Wednesday so far, I've got three of three of them done. Solid. Very nice. I dig it. So I'd say one of my wins is going to be the chargers winning. And <laughs> a part of that is that the Raiders lost <clears throat> and the Broncos lost. So both of those are wins for me <laughs> and make me happy. Um, but like an actual win we were talking about before we started this podcast, I had my like heaviest workout today, which felt like a win until I decided to go too far. So the win was 200 for a set of four on deadlifts. And then my want is to go back in time and not have ego lifted. <laughs> and put an extra five pounds on the bar and My watch is for a time machine. Right. Yes. So, and I feel like it's tricky and I don't know if you guys feel this way. And like the funny part as I was recording these sets and I like reminded myself, like if this set is ugly, like you don't have to share it. Nobody will know that you recorded this set, Nobody will you know, know. <laughs> no one will know except for everyone at the gym. And so I went ahead and put an extra five pounds on the bar and it was too much. And now my back hurts really bad. And so my want is to figure that out, but also to stick to my macros this weekend, because I've been doing the thing where we like, where I'll stick to my calories over the weekend, but not my macros, like as yeah. closely. And I'll say football threw a wrench in that because I came home from, um, uh, Riker had his, one of his, uh, routine camps for cheer this weekend. Um, both my big kids are on all-star cheer and he got his fall to bridge kickover, almost a back walkover. So a big win there. Um, but I came home and was like, I've been with 25 loud children for like six hours this weekend. And I should have two IPAs and then eat a lot of Tostitos. And I did that and things stayed like stable, you know, because I spent a lot of time reversing and stuff. So that's always a nice win, but yeah. I know I could do better. So I'm going to try and be better this weekend. All right. Danica. My, let's see. My win is that I survived this past week. My husband left for a work mission for a whole month. And that night I got slammed with like just everything you could possibly think of and then all three of us so myself and my two girls that now you can hear in the background I uh, got COVID and that was horrid so it, it's been a nightmare I would say for the past like full week and but the win is that I'm here I am yeah I'm still thriving like I'm still alive um, look I look, I look halfway decent. Like I'm capable of showing up into the world. So yeah. that's my win. And I kept two humans alive and I'm so proud of myself. Like goals, I, goals, <laughs> kept them alive. The dogs are still existing. They're still alive. And my house is still all here. So I survived. Love um, it. Love Very it. Nice. <laughs> my want, <laughs> my want is that I would just want to kind of feel like a, a human again. I don't feel all the way there. And I had it in my mind that, I don't know if you guys make these little goals, but I had two like little goals of, oh, my husband's going to be away. I'm going to kick it up a notch and I'm really going to like get to the gym. I'm going to take care of myself. And when he returns, he's going to be like, oh my gosh, my wife. Like, I just adore her. Plus, we have a huge, like, retreat coming up. And I'm like, these people haven't met me. I'm going to bring my best look. 
I've been failing at that because I've been like a walking zombie. So my want is to press restart and try again, like just try now. I lost a week and that's okay. I'm just going to try now. And that's my want. I love it. Awesome. Coming back after being sick sucks. Oh, it I mean, really it's, it's, Sometimes it's great. Like my, my Monday was like, oh my God, what is this? <laughs> but like, it could have also been like, oh my God, what is this? Like, it's like, you just uh-huh. never know. Yeah. yeah. And I am very, so as a type one diabetic too, I like, my sugars were definitely messed up and I just felt completely out of it. And I'm very in tune with my body. And I try to listen to my body and, and remind myself, like, you just need to take care of yourself. But my mind is like, get with the program. And my body is like, no, actually, no, we're not, we're not showing up yet for you. So like your mind can do whatever you want to do, but, uh, we're back here. So that was me today. I hear you. I hear you. (laughs) I feel like we all feel that anyways. Um, should we get started on our topic and our topic? This is why we have actually Danica on today because Danica, she also, like you also have just health and nutrition clients or like fitness and nutrition clients, but you also do mindset coaching for uh, pro physique. And um, it's kind of something like a little bit special that we bring for our clients. And she's talking to us uh, or with us today on the psychological aspects of gaining weight. Yeah. Huge. I feel like this is something that we, that not a lot of people talk about because around us and what we hear, I think as coaches more so, if you think like the majority of our clientele, they're asking for weight loss. Yeah. Um, but a lot of our clients may experience weight gain for some reason or another, that's actually beneficial to them. And, and I also think in social media, a lot of the times you're hearing weight loss. There's not really this focus on healthy weight gain or the impacts of weight gain when it's needed for a certain individual. It's not sexy. Right. It doesn't make yeah, it should flashy be. thumbnail. I mean, it should be. I agree. It should be. But it's not like, oh my God, I gained like five pounds, 10 pounds, whatever. Like it's not, it's not something, it's almost like, because you mentioned like in society and stuff, it's almost like, oh, what happened? Instead of, oh, congratulations. It's like, oh, well, you know, like what's wrong with you, right? You or not like- going to the gym as much? What's or wrong? like questions like that where they'd be like, oh, did you, are you not doing that fitness stuff anymore? Yeah, instead of, instead of like, oh, congratulations, you're healing your like hormones, right? So yeah, I think, um, I think- I think it's really important that we start with, you know, like why it's good, right? Like why, um, like in what occasions would somebody, maybe this would be a good thing. Yeah, I can definitely speak on that for some of my personal clients and for myself. So I know that for me personally, there's been many phases and I'm sure you guys with competing, with working with competitors, gaining weight post show to get me to, um, maintenance calories or to get my caloric intake up and in a stronger metabolic position to even think about doing a show again, to get my hormones healthy, to get my body fat percentage in a really healthy place, to be able to be strong. Um, for me to being able to gain weight so that I could procreate was necessary during my life. So for me, I know that there's been many times, many chapters in my life that weight gain was of priority for my overall health and for the goals long-term that I had too. And I've had many clients as well, mostly competitors, but then other individuals that have come to me that have been undernourished or they haven't really fed themselves in the best way or fueled their bodies in the best way. And their, their loss of period, or there's so many different symptoms that you would have if you're underweight but they need to be able to put on a healthy amount of weight, whether that be, it's kind of a combination of body fat percentage and muscle, but they need to be able to do that in order to thrive, in order for their body to not be in this survival mode. Um, And then, I mean, Christina, you can 
speak to this too, and I can too, but I needed to gain weight when I was creating a human being. Like when I had a human building inside of me and I was trying to build a lung for that given Tuesday, I needed to be able to gain weight along the way. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people are surprised by that too, where like it's, even though, you know, you are going to gain weight and stuff. I feel like because we have this whole culture around, like we see a lot of celebrities with stuff, right. Where there's the whole like bounce back idea with things. And so it's, or belly only, I don't know if you go on Pinterest and search that, like it's insane. The amount of stuff that comes up where it's like how I had a belly only pregnancy and Mm -hmm. like things like that. And so how, like, and I've talked to clients before where they're like, well, how do I make sure I only gain weight in my stomach? And like to go with a lot of stuff Danica was saying, like, it isn't just a matter of like, you're building a lung or something that day, but the way we store fat as women, just as women, or while we're building a lung that day is literally to help us stay upright. Like while we're pregnant and we have a belly in front of us. And so we store in places that help keep our center of gravity in a good spot and like things like that. So that's why like, you'll see some women will get like even upper back fat or like on their hips and like things like that. And it's different stuff to like literally help keep you from just falling forward because you have this ball on the front of your body. And so when it comes to trying to restrict that as much as possible, it's like, there's just so many things going on here that we need to work on. And it's a, a lot of times I feel like a huge red flag for like, what's going to happen postpartum, because no matter what you do, no matter how belly only you are, I feel like everybody, at least from everyone I've spoken to, like you come out feeling squishy and weird anyways, and you got to put your body back together. And so I, you know, it's a great time. I think to talk about like reverse dieting with clients with pregnancy is something I love to work on where it's like, Mm -hmm. you can kind of get them to wrap their mind around it for themselves. If you first have them transfer that mental aspect to it's for the baby. Mm -hmm. And then like explain it like around that and let it roll up together to where eventually it's benefiting both of you. But I feel like it's a lot easier with pregnant moms to think about the baby over what their body needs. Well, and also it sets it up better for, you know, if you're, if you're choosing to breastfeed, because now also you've had that caloric support for nine full months, you know, and you're used to eating a certain amount. And now, I mean, Breastfeeding, depending on the person and their genetics, is going to burn anywhere from 400 to 1,000 calories extra a day. So making sure that you're also thinking long-term like that. And that's something that, you know, I especially do, like, you know, whenever my wife was pregnant with both of our kids, it was like, look, got to start getting some calories up. We know that this is what's going to happen. Um, Any one of my clients that comes to me and says, hey, Phil, I'm pregnant cool. Let's go ahead and explain what some of the benefits are going to be. Let's start to get some expectations because, you know, we can't be tied to this idea that, you know, the scale is going to stay stable. Like you said, you know, you're growing a lung today, you're growing a foot tomorrow. Like that's a hell of a metabolic demand on your body. And we've got to be fueling that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it comes with a lot of like self-compassion piece, which I think a lot of it a lot of times is missed in any kind of like a reverse diet, any kind of like just growth phase in general, because yeah, absolutely. Pregnancy, like you don't really have control over your body um, from a lot of aspects, like, right. Um, But also, even if you are, let's say in a muscle building phase, or you're trying to reverse out of like um, amenorrhea, amenorrhea, um, and, and like improving your health markers, it, it takes a lot of self-compassion and, um, like kind of distancing yourself from that scale. And maybe the scale isn't like that great of a measurement. Like it, I always like having it as kind of a piece of data, but it's not a measurement necessarily for progress, especially when our goal is like more health related or like pregnancy, um, post-pregnancy, that type of thing. Yeah, because I always explain it like this, you know, the the scale is just one area, it's just one tool, you know, think about it like your retirement accounts, you know, would you invest all of your nest egg into a single stock like Pepsi? 
No, that would be absolutely foolish. Instead, you're probably investing in things like mutual funds or real estate. You're spreading it out. So just like we don't want to just get so tied up in, you know, well, how's the scale moving for me? You know, whether it's a matter of, hey, I'm coming out of a, you know, four, five, six month long dieting phase, or we're coming out of, you know, or we're, we're finding out, hey, I'm growing a human, or you're just in general trying to put on muscle. Look, let's look at other variables and see, all right, well, am I getting stronger? Am I maintaining a good relationship with food? How's my recovery? How are my hormones? I mean, it's amazing for me seeing the number of guys that I work with that whenever they come to me, they're already, you know, someone that is saying, hey, coach, I'd like to lose, you know, 20, 30, 40, 100 plus pounds. But then I look at their food log from recording for a couple of days and I go, all right, man, you're using a food scale, you're weighing stuff out, you're tracking everything. I'm, I'm believing you that you're being honest in your report to me. And I'm seeing grown men that are undernourishing their bodies as well, eating totally. 1400 calories a day. I mean, I've, mm -hmm. I've yeah, like, this is not just a female. No, thing. no. Yeah. And it's, it is a lot of that dieting culture that everybody wants to be a little bit leaner and look like so-and-so and, -so and you know, it's, it's something that look, you've got to just accept and embrace your own journey and recognize there are different phases of it, different seasons. Like I've said on here before, you can't live in fall as much as my wife would love to, which y'all should see the amount of pumpkins <laughs> and apple, everything right now. Um, but you can't live in fall forever. You've got to go into winter. You've got to go into spring. You've got to go into summer. It's the same thing with the idea of always being in a perpetual fat loss phase. You cannot live there. That is not sustainable and it's not healthy. Dear God, it's not fun either. It gets really no. tricky too, I think, when you're hearing somebody who like, and I'm sure you guys have seen this with like check-ins and stuff where they'll be mad that the scale isn't doing what they're hoping for it to do. But then at the same time, it's like, I'm not going to the bathroom routinely. I am uncomfortable because of this. This is going wrong. I'm not sleeping well. I'm super stressed out. All I can think about is food. And they'll list off all of these other like mental aspects of things where the one thing that's sticking out in a big, big way is what the scale is doing when everything else about their world is screaming, we're in a bad spot. And like, I need support. And a lot of time it'll be like the food side of things. And it's like, okay, well, we're probably going to have to take our mind off of this number, whether it's one you've been at before, or it's one that you've just decided is a place that you need to be. And like, we have to shift it to saying, instead of, well, I'm trying to be as small as I can, or I'm trying to be as lean as I can. Maybe we need to gain weight try to not focus on that part. Like, I'm not saying every week we have to like do a dance because the scale went up or something, but instead focus on that like grocery list of issues that we've got going on. And, you know, maybe it's, I was able to go to the bathroom every morning this week, or I was able to go out to eat with a family member and not hate myself afterwards and things like that. And a lot of times those things are going to come with having to put more fuel into your body and being okay with the fact that things might shift a little bit. Yeah. Danica, are there, I was actually going to ask Danica, if there's any like thing that you help clients out with, like for mentally taking back, like mentally distancing themselves from the scale. Is there any like thing that you talk to them about? I mean, I know yeah, it's all yeah. client dependent, but yeah, absolutely. So a lot of with a lot of my clients and then the mindset clients that I work with, I will have them do an exercise of just zooming out and I'll ask them, like, let's shift focus. And I don't want to focus on like the immediate goal that we're going after, but let's zoom out for a second. And I want you to describe to me the last decade of your life. And that might be like when you're 100 to 110 years old, what do you want to be able to achieve? Like, how do you want to be living in that last decade of your life? And it, it gets them to switch their mind a little bit to not be fixated on like the now and like, oh my gosh, the scale isn't moving. Oh my gosh. So it has them think about their health long-term. And then they'll tell me, I want to be able to check my own mail, wipe my own butt, 
lift my own groceries, pick up my grandchildren. And I'll say, okay, awesome. So let's backtrack from there. You want to lift your grandchild, say your grandchild is approximately like 30 pounds. So we need to be able to lift something that's 30 pounds. And we have to be able to do it consistently without any pain, right? Awesome. So in order to do that, what do we need to do? We have to fuel ourselves well. We have to get good sleep. We have to have really good digestion. Our stress level needs to be in, a, in an appropriate place. So then I kind of work backwards and I'll say, it's funny because all of those goals that we talked about, not one of them you told me about the scale. Typically, that's what happens mm -hmm. is that we zoom out and we don't even think about that. We're not, because chances are, and some people might be different, but the last decade of your night life, you're not like, definitely want to be that weight, <laughs> right? Like typically speaking, um, but I had them zoom out and then I had them backtrack, like work backwards. And then I'll say, so when it comes to the scale, the relevance of it right now with the goals that we want to achieve kind of lessened just by us communicating and talking about other goals long term and how we can work towards those goals and immediate goals at the same time. Then I'll say, now let's explore maybe not weighing in for a couple of weeks. And yeah. maybe let's just work on strength because we want to improve strength and let's work on, you know, sleep and let's work on other things that are going to help with progression. Um, so I'll shift them out of that. That's like one thing that I'll have them do. That's like a, a mindset task that I want them to complete. And that's then another thing I have them explore. Away. That's phenomenal. Yeah, it, it, I do it to myself too and to my husband. And I feel like, it just puts things into perspective, you know, yeah. like it, and every now and then we all need that. We all need like a little, like snap back into reality and given a shift of perspective. Um, another thing that I like to do is to be able to kind of dive into the narrative of like, how was weight developed? Like the, the dialogue with weight being involved where did that stem from? Like, where, where did this relationship with the scale come from? Where did it start? Um, and these are for clients that I typically know if we're really, really fixated on it and that it dictates their whole entire day, depending on what the scale says in the morning, then we'll talk about, you know, what, why do you place that much value? And what is that fear that's kind of behind the scale? And what would happen? Let's go there. So say the scale goes up. What's going to happen? And I'll have them like, take me to their fear. Take me to that place that they're so frightened from that like, they don't, they, all they have to report is bad, bad, negative, negative, negative. And then that's their whole entire day. I want to know where is that headspace? Where did that start? And, and take me there. What does it feel like, look like, breathe like everything, right? So nine times out of 10, they'll say, well, nothing really. Like if the scale goes up, nothing really is going to happen. Like the world will still exist and the, and you won't explode. Like chances are you're still going to be, you're still going to be there. You're going to be breathing. Like you're still going to be you and it's going to be great. Yeah. So yeah, to I be think, able to help them through that fear is really important too. Yeah. I was going to, I've actually used that with a few clients as well. Like what's going to happen when we're here? Like, cause Christina, you talked about that, that number and like being tied to a number on the scale. And I relate to that a whole lot because <laughs> all through my twenties, um, I was like one, one twenty that that's the weight on the scale. Like if I'm 122, oh, I can't. And then if it was like 119, I was like, yay. But like, that's like a burger. Like, I don't know. Like that's, I always equate like a pound. I'm like, that's like a burger. Um, I don't know why I say that, but I, I weigh much more than 120 now. Um, and I am in a much better headspace and a much more like physical body. Anyways, whatever. Um, but that's where I always go with my clients too, is if they're getting stuck on like a number, I'm like, okay, well, what's going to happen if you are three pounds more or five pounds more, and it could equate to, well, I won't fit in my clothes anymore, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, well, how do you know? 
right? Like you don't naturally necessarily know what is going to happen. And I understand that sometimes like that unknown or that fear can be kind of scary, but you also don't know. So if you're um, like, Christina, you also mentioned something like practicing on, on the now and the habits and the behaviors and things. And Danica, you mentioned, we've all mentioned that. Um, if you're doing all of those things and you're just kind of focusing on improving your health in that long-term and you're keeping that long-term goal in, in, in the forefront of your mind as you're doing these things, maybe that extra five pounds or whatever that is won't be actually what you think it is in your head. Well, and that's something else is like a lot of people underestimate how much their physique can change from putting on five pounds of muscle. Mm -hmm. That's a super big, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, I, I find that body composition and obviously, you know, that's, that's what a lot of people are tuning in to listen about is how to improve their body composition. But, you know, body composition, general health, you know, functionality in terms of your strength and how well you get through your day, putting on five pounds is of muscle is going to be far more beneficial than if you lost 10 pounds of body fat, it's going to have much more of an impact on all of those things. And I remember for myself, like part of my background, for those who don't know, I was over 330 pounds on my 16th birthday. Um, the scale only went up to 330. I stepped on and it just read 888.8, um, which is an absolute gut punch, like especially that young. And as I started losing weight, you know, initially not the healthiest, but manners that were taken, but I was also just a 16 year old kid. Luckily, I found Paul on bodybuilding.com and got advice from him and learned about protein and nutrition and actually fueling the body for training to change body composition. So I remember once I was finally, you know, at what I thought, Hey, this is good. I'm strong. I'm able to still be competitive as a power lifter, as a teenager. Like I was sitting between like 210, 225 really comfortably, but it was the idea of adding calories in was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go right back. I'll be back to 330 pounds, you know, having to shop at the big boy stores. And it took a very long time for me to actually go from like, you know, a really low amount of calories for a teenager. I think I was probably on like 1700 calories at the end of my dieting phase. Um, it took a long time for me to be okay with even adding in 50 calories. But it's amazing that once you do it and you go, man, I got in a little bit better workout this week and I feel better. And like, especially as a teenager, I remember, you know, getting my, my hormones checked just as part of a physical and coming out of 1700 calories. I remember my total testosterone was like in the five hundreds. And my doctor was like, that's low for being 17, Phil, what are you doing? And she took the time to explain I remember asking the guys on bodybuilding.com. So luckily back then it was um, Paul, it was Lane, it was Will Grazione, it was yeah, Eric Lane, Helms. Yeah. Yep, you know. Um, oh, Eric Helms. Yeah. So it was really awesome that like all these people were like, yeah, man, like don't be afraid to add these calories in. And once you actually buy in and you go, all right, to damn the scale, I am more than just a number. I am more than just my gravitational mass on this planet. You start feeling better. And I remember I went back and got my testosterone checked again later on. And it was exactly where it should have been for being 17 years old. Once I added in some fats and understood, hey, cholesterol starts the steroid hormone cascade. Like that's where the testosterone is going to come from. That's where the progesterone and the estradiol and all these other beneficial things are going to come from it really is amazing the difference in how willing you're, you know, how willing you are and how more comfortable you get with eventually seeing that number go up a little bit. The benefits far outweigh just how much the scale says, like, I can't tell you how much my best friend weighs because I really don't give a shit. That is I bring up yeah. all the time. I was working with somebody like a, a couple years ago, um, where she had an event coming up. She was going to like a wedding, I think. 
And she was going to see some people that she hadn't seen in a while. And she had told me that she texted them before she saw them apologizing for her weight. Oh my God. Like in that message, did you ask them to all weigh in? Like, did you ask them what they weighed or what size their dress was? Right. Like, was any of that your concern? Like, why would you think that you matter so little that the only thing they're going to see when they haven't seen you in years is like, holy shit, look at her gross. Like, no, that is, I, I if that's heart. what's going on in your circle of friends, we need to travel down like a different road and <laughs> talk about how we need new friends. No like, shit, what the hell? Yeah. If we're at an event like that, and that's what it comes down to. And the other thing I'll try to talk to people about is like, I mean, we've all helped a lot of people lose weight, right? I feel like it is not very often that you'll work with somebody, even if they reach their goal that they wanted to be. So say it's 120, right? They get to 120 pounds. Is it really that often that they're like, cool, this is all I've ever wanted. Right. I what else changes about lower. your life? Never. No, they're like... Well, I wonder what 115 looks like. I need to be 110. And then they set, like they kick the can further down the road and you keep searching for that. You're like, I'm still not happy. Right. And it's like, um, I found it really interesting with, um, Zach Efron lately had like, he did that article talking about what he had to do for Zach Efron did an article. Oh, well, he, so like an interview, right? Oh, okay. I was like, (laughs) he wrote an art. I was like. I don't know him. Him. Hey, don't right. pick on him. He like, was, can do him wrong. Well, I mean, <laughs> yo, like watching that Baywatch, I was like, yo, I don't know how old he is, but yeah. yeah. So he well, I was about, about to quote how, Darth like, Vader and just go, hmm, impressive. Right? Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, so, anyways, interview. He had talked in that about how like everybody looks at celebrities saying, like, oh, this is great and stuff like that. And he was like, that was miserable. Like it was the worst time of my life. It kicked off depression. I was on diuretics. I, it caused all of these different issues. It was not maintainable. It was my whole life. He like, okay. In a celebrity fashion, right. Like went off on like retreats, did his yoga, like has a whole new life, like all these kinds of things. And like, that's wonderful. We can't all like necessarily go the Zach F one, (laughs) but I thought it was nice to have somebody come out and be like, look, I look jacked in this movie and stuff, but like I was miserable and I never want to like be that way. And a lot of the times people forget that to get to these excessively lean places or like even because even though it's lifestyle clients, do you ever get somebody sending you a picture of who they want to look like? And it's somebody who is legitimately in a lifestyle phase, or is it always somebody who is most definitely in a peak week with a tan on and like, it was, and they're like, well, this is just what I want to look like every day. And you bring like, up, like you bring up such an interesting point. Cause like, I've heard about like Hugh Jackman and stuff like that. It's like, they have a day in their schedule where it's like, okay, this is when Hugh Jackman takes off his shirt and he gets all like oiled up and we do the shot. And like, it's like a peak week for them. Like yeah. they like literally like, you're totally right. They do like diuretics and they don't drink any water and they like blah, blah, blah. Oh my God. What is his name? And he does um, the Marvel movies and um, Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> yes, Chris Hemsworth. And he had, oh my God, when he was dieting, the funniest things when he would be like, this is my apple that I had to eat for the day. But anyways, <laughs> I digress. It's freaking funny. If you find it, like he did the whole like series, but yeah, like it, these individuals that it's like, oh, I want to look like so-and-so it's like, okay, well, like they literally kill themselves for this one shot in this one day. And they don't look like that. Yeah. Right. And, but I was happy to hear like them talking about the mental aspects of things and how they needed to put it back on to get back to living a life they wanted to live. Like, and so, so my number is 130. Like for, I think that's where I should be. Right. Like if I was going to pick any weight, I would put myself at 130. But if I talk to my husband about it, he's not like, sure. Like he thinks I look cool. It's not his favorite phase for me. Like he's like, you know, you're super lean. Then like I get crazy diet face. That's usually my pushing phase. And that's when I have to like really kill it afterwards, you know, Mm -hmm. but the worst part about me trying to maintain a life at that random number that I've chosen 
is I do not, I'll go out to eat, but I'm not going to order anything. I'm not eating with the family. I'm not super fun, things like that. And that's lifestyle wise. Like that's where I got after Ben. I was super excited to get back there when we went to the pro physique experience and stuff. But realistically, like, it's just not a place where I can feel like I'm present with like friends and family and stuff like that and enjoy things. And so for me, like, and it took a lot to, you know, not be in a place where I was like tied to wanting to be there. But like, I, one thing I've tried to work on a lot after having Claire is like, instead of trying to focus on getting the scale down, getting to where I was after my third baby, like things like that, it's been trying to get back to strength, get back to capability. I know like the shape I want to get to will come from that. Like I'll build the muscle. Things will make sense. And Danica, I don't know if you can like chime in with this because you brought it up with stuff, but it's funny because I'll talk to people where I'll say, maybe we don't have to weigh in every day. Like maybe we take a break. If somebody else brings it up, I'll be 100% honest. I say it's because I love the data so much and I can like pull myself away from it. I honestly cannot think of a time that I have not weighed in more days throughout a seven day period than not over the last like 15 years. Mm. Well, is that just a habit for you though? That's something that's like your go-to that you subconsciously have, have built in because you've done it for so long that like to do, not do it feels weird. It's to a certain extent, but there is still that tie of like, well, I need to know so I can make decisions about my day. Mm. And that doesn't mean change my macros or something like that, but it's literally like, if I need to like be more on top of myself mentally or like things like that. Cause I mean, you know, getting to this point, I know it's not going to help be helpful to like, Oh, I should do more cardio or I should eat less or something like that. So it's not that it affects my habits or my macros or my cardio, my lifting or anything. It's very much a mindset thing where it's like, I mean, it sounds terrible, but like, do I, should I be grumpy with myself or like, do I celebrate how yesterday obviously went and things like that. And so, I mean, it's something when I have clients that are going through it, that are having trouble with it, like I get it. Cause I'm like, you know, I've been so ingrained in that habit too. And same thing with macro tracking. When I hear people talk about wanting to like go with intuitive eating and not tracking anymore after extended periods of time with tracking, I'm like, gosh, I'm so deep in the matrix. I don't know if I could. Like, (laughs) you know, I think it's, it's trying to figure out too the purpose behind it. Like what purpose does it serve you? And is the purpose that it's serving you? Is it actually benefiting you in any way, shape or form? And that's where like, so I, I tell my clients too, there's like this box of, of physical hygiene that we should all have. And in this beautiful little box, we brush our teeth, we take a shower, like we do the the physical hygiene stuff. And also in it should be, we take care of our bodies, we fuel our bodies, we exercise, we like breathe deeply. If scale is in that box and it's not making any like good progress with your health hygiene, get it the F out of the box. Like it doesn't belong in that box. So get it away. And we're only going to access this box for a little bit. If we want to bring it back in and it serves a good purpose and it takes care of our like health hygiene, fantastic. But right now you need to audit your box and you need to figure out if that box is filled with the tools that you need right now to get you to progress or not. So that's like another little thing that you could, that's like another task that I have people do to just kind of audit their behaviors. And is it really contributing to positive mindset and positive self-awareness and internal dialogue? Or is it not? Is it contributing to this negative internal dialogue that affects everything else that you do in your life? Right. Yeah. I think that, like that helps you be more objective or is it Mm. subjective? Objective. I always do the same thing, <laughs> whatever it is, whatever the objective, although, um, subjective. objective, um, about things. I love that you were like, okay, well, how is that serving you right now? Because I think that we, like, I know that I'll always get questions from clients or, you know, I'll do that like little Instagram anonymous message question thing. And it's like, oh, is this good behavior? Always oh, this bad behavior. And it's like, well, it's not good. And it's not bad, but 
It's just what is serving you at this time. And that's what I always kind of like bring that back to is like, this can help you embrace where your body is in Mm -hmm. that moment in time, because that's like, that's, what's really hard is having that, like, okay, I'm, I'm embracing my body for what it can do right now. And, uh, that doesn't mean that I, that I, uh, I'm not working on changing it or like improving different things. Um, but it can help you be more objective as in, okay, what's in my box right now? Uh, what do I need to, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I um, <laughs> I'm, such a, I'm so, I'm such a child, um, it, right? Like what is serving me in this moment? Okay, great. And I like how you said that that helps you like compartmentalize um, and, and like move forward in your goals and be okay with where your body is at. Another thing that I tell my clients is like, this is definitely like prep clients, but for anybody who is going through like a growth phase, like if you're undernourished or like pregnancy, pre, post, as, but get new clothes, guys. Yes, new clothes. definitely. Oh. Buy new clothes. Buy buy big girl underwear. That's what I remember going through a prep and going through a reverse. And I was doing a podcast with one of my close friends. And she was like, Does your underwear fit? I was like, Well, no, because I'm reversing. And she was like, Yeah, we just need to buy big girl underwear. Like, just buy bigger, buy bigger clothes, like, buy a different size. And plus, you probably shouldn't buy a bunch of clothes during the last three weeks of your prep or fat you probably shouldn't. Totally. yeah 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 you've got yeah. to understand that as you add the calories in i mean you're going to you know so th- that's also where i always talk with people about what to expect after a fat loss phase right or after prep for my for my contest clients um whenever we finally like let's say working with someone since this is lifestyle focused let's say I'm working with somebody and one of my goals as a coach, like fuck BMI, it was invented by an astronomer, not an actual doctor. There's a random fact for you. Um, so it's not taking into account your muscle mass. It's not taking into account, you know, your height, your waist, your, your overall distribution of your body mass. So something that I'm very fortunate that my, my physician has drilled into me since I was 18 is the waist to height ratio instead. And what that is, is you want your waist to be half or less than the equivalent of your height. So if you're, uh, you know, let's say you're a shorter person. Christina and I are like doing math. (laughs) Like if if someone is uh, 60 inches tall, right? Like that'd be five foot. Hey, you should aim for your waist being under 30 inches. It's going to mean that you're probably carrying a healthy amount of body fat or a lower amount going to put you at less of a risk for developing diseases uh, related to metabolic syndromes. So, you know, that's one of my goals with a lot of people is like, hey, I want you to get to where we're under that threshold, right? I want your waist to be less than half of your height in inches. So once we get there, you know, well, hey, let's, let's see, can we push on a little bit? Because otherwise, if we add calories in, we're going to naturally, as we get up to maintenance calories, we're going to put on just a little bit of body fat. We're going to store a little more glycogen and we've got muscles all over us, right? Like that's the skeletal frame. It's got muscles, including the abdomen, including the lower back, including on your abductors, including literally everywhere. So understanding that, you know, yeah, having a, like a lot of my guys, I tell them, look, have smaller shirts that fit you whenever we are in the dieting phase. Like we just want to get a little bit leaner for summer being by the pool. But then whenever we're focusing on a strength phase in the fall, because we want to enjoy football and having some wings and having some chili and having the tomahawk steak, like expect to go up a shirt size. But one of the goals can be Let's make it so that even at the larger shirt size, your arms are making the sleeves burst at the seam. I love that. Focus on that shit. So have the extra clothes, you know, and yes, that's probably going to also mean having to go up a size in your jeans, but big deal. If you're deadlifting a beastly amount of weight or you're overhead pressing, you know, 
your your significant other's body weight like you're strong as hell there's not anyone looking at you going did you get bigger pants like no yeah. they're going damn you got bigger quads you got bigger shoulders and you look awesome and you're feeling good happy for you yeah i actually just oh i i was gonna say i actually just got rid of a, a bunch of tank tops that don't fit me anymore and it's not because of my waist it's because of my lats and i'm like damn like they're nice shirts like they were like silk and i'm like god damn it but um also i'm like yeah like i have like back mass and like that's super cool like that was a big goal of mine for like two or year two three years and they don't fit me anymore and it's because of my back and i'm like you know what fuck that i'll take that yeah Bye. yeah exactly yeah. i will have that with clients a lot where it'll be like okay so our calories are up like you're eating an amount of food that a lot of times it, it was unimaginable for women that they would be exceeding 2000 calories. And then like, if we're pushing like over 300 carb and they're just like, humans aren't supposed to eat that much. And I'm like, but you are, and like, you're doing great. And so they're like, well, the scale went up and it's like, okay, well, we're eating more. Uh, you're hitting PRs routinely. And so you're lifting more. And the goal was to put muscle on, like, it can't just go into a vacuum and like, we're not going to see the scale go up. Like if we're just doing math with some of that, if like, you're trying to create lean tissue and you're taking in more fuel, like there's going to be a significant chance that we're going to see you get a little heavier with stuff. And that's why, um, you know, following different metrics can be so important where we're looking at like the various measurements and, you know, depending on how they store stuff, I feel like, you know, asking people like, what do you want to follow with it? But I think doing like thighs and waist can be really helpful for how women store body fat, yeah. because if they're working on getting like their squats up or their deadlifts or whatever. And we're eating more and they're getting upset because the scales going up, but their waist, this is like the best, right? Their waist stays exactly where it was when we started, or maybe even goes down a little bit. And they're like, but my thighs are up. And I'm like, girl, what everyone wants. <laughs> yes. That means everything's going perfect. <laughs> like, so wait, let me get this straight. Your waist is and your butt is bigger. Yep. Was but we're not okay. like a tiny <laughs> little waist and a big thing in your face. <laughs> like, that's what we're going for. I, I love that. I, my, my struggle honestly was actually figuring out how to dress my body differently. And like, I actually really, really struggled with that for like a year. Um, and I, so I don't know if you guys can relate, but you're all like shaking your heads, but I didn't know how to dress my body anymore. Cause like, again, lats, like I was like, wait, I have a back now. Um, and yeah, I couldn't, you know, ta like I, I, yeah, I just felt uncomfortable in the clothes that I had from previous, like my previous body. Um, and I, I now got rid of them and I've, I've kind of figured it out, but I had to like struggle and like work through that aspect of just like, being kind of uncomfortable in like not really knowing how to dress my body anymore. Um, and that was really hard. Like that, that was hard, but now I figured out like, just get stretchy stuff, wear things that hit me on my waist because that makes my waist look smaller, right? Like those kinds of things. But I think that that's super relatable too, is like, okay, yeah, totally. We're, we're gaining all of these like awesome strength things, but there are those realities of, yeah, we need different clothes, but I don't know. Personally, I, I struggled. So like, if, if you are experiencing this, like if anybody's listening to this and you're like, well, I don't know how to dress my body anymore. Yeah. I I've been there and I'm sure we all have been there and it's, it's weird and it's hard. Um, you just got to experiment and like go with the flow. Cause and, and find things that make you feel good. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yes. So, Phil, we've talked about this before, right? Like you love stitch fix, love, so you know a bunch of stuff. love stitch fix game changer for me in the search for jeans postpartum when I got to a point where, and like, so with being postpartum and breastfeeding Claire, like having to keep weight on is something I've realized has hands down been the reason why this has been my most successful breastfeeding journey, because I have not 
put trying to get smaller as like my Mm -hmm. main goal. And I've like kept calories up and everything and focused on that. And so it's been a huge win. It's still frustrating sometimes, but it's been a big win. So I was like, I can't wear stretchy pants all the time anymore. I want to be able to wear like real pants out on a date and things like that. And we had gone shopping a couple of times, complete disaster. I don't recommend going jean shopping. Like three or four months postpartum because it's just not super fun. And, you know, you're staring at the wall. You don't know what size you are anymore and like things like that. So I sent measurements to Stitch Fix and was just like, this is what I'm looking for. You tell me what I am, send me a box of clothes and I'll be happy. And I have like four pairs of jeans that I am obsessed with and that I feel so good in. They sent me like perfect dresses and stuff like that. And there were so many options. And what I loved about it was because the way it shows up and it's just like a little present for you. I don't look at the card that has like the names of the clothes and like all of the sizes and stuff like that. I just put them on. And then look in the mirror, see how I feel about them and then decide if I want them. And it's not that issue of like, I have to get an extra large and like having to like walk back and grab something or whatever and having like that mental space. And so for me, it's been a big like help in just like separating myself from that part that I knew was going to be annoying. And like, cause I don't know if you guys have been there, but like buying pants and just not wanting to get them because they were a size. I feel like that was me like all through high school and college and stuff. Yeah. And just like wearing uncomfortable pants. Cause you're like, well, I'm not buying. I've got to fit size. into my old size. Right. Yeah. And so like having that place with it. And so I feel like having the the separation from it helped feel good in my clothes and not stress and not care about what the size says. I couldn't even tell you what half of them are right now. And that's what I love about it is like, you know, if you do get something. So for me, button up shirts are an absolute nightmare for me. Like, my arms will fit into uh, an extra large and it's like hugging every last bit of skin, but then it's really tight in the chest and the shoulders, but then in the stomach, it's like, I'm a walking human bell. So I hate wearing button up shirts. And that's what I love about something like a stitch fix is, you know, Hey, if I don't like that size, I can go up or I can go down and it's literally just in the checkout. Like, Oh yeah. Uh, the pants that I got, you know, if I want to be able to be a little more active in these, I probably do need to go up a size or I need to go down a size. Like that's what I absolutely love about kind of removing yourself from the actual shopping store is there's less of that connotation of having to actually reach out and grab a yeah. larger size if you're in a you know reverse dieting phase or a smaller size like sure because also as a guy like whenever I'm in any kind of a calorie deficit like it does get a little bit hurtful to my ego to see like oh, man I just went down from an extra large to a large like that can be a little bit of a mind for me whenever you know my strength is also decreasing like I look at dieting and reverse dieting or maintenance phases and I go man life is just so much more fun in a maintenance phase than anything else. So I don't know. I'm, I'm also just, I'm wired a little bit different just because of my own journey. Right. So, you know, when, when you've been at that one extreme end before, it just really always makes you kind of leaves that lasting impression. Um, And I know part of that for myself, like just touching on shopping, I remember, I went to buy my first pair of jeans after I had lost all that weight. And I just thought like, okay, maybe I'd went down like one size. And the per- the associate that was helping me out was like, well, no, you're definitely a lot smaller than that. Well, she was like, my boyfriend wears that size and you're a lot smaller than him. And that was kind of the first time that I ever realized like got a little bit of body dysmorphia going on. And that's something that you can experience it kind of on both ends, right? Like as the guy, you think, oh no, I'm I'm getting smaller. I'm getting weaker and I'm looking worse. I've lost all this muscle. But also whenever you're in the, you know, the reverse dieting phase where you're trying or expecting to gain some weight that can really have a huge, huge impact on your well-being. And I'd love 
Danica, for you to just kind of touch on on that topic as well, the the body dysmorphia. You know, how do you help people? What are some exercises people can do to help get a better grasp? Yeah, I think that you know it all does depend on, I guess, the severity of it and and what phase they're in, what phase they're coming out of too. Um, but something that I found to be very helpful with individuals who, um, especially with reverse dieting and gaining weight, and I know that the the dialogue needs to start in the in the beginning. Like I think that it's really important for coaches to understand that it can't just be right after show that we start to talk about what does reverse look like. Like mm-hmm. it needs to be had from the very beginning. Um, and to help them to have that like narrative running through their mind and a good healthy association with what reversing is. But another thing that I like to focus on with clients, and it seems like a silly task, but I'll, I did this with younger, like adolescents before, and I put a huge piece of paper on a wall and I said, draw yourself, draw your body. I want to know like what your body is. And then I would have them stand up against whatever their drawing was. And then I would outline their body. And typically, it kind of shows you how they see themselves in the comparison of what they actually are. Um, And I know some adults wouldn't do that, but I've done it for myself before to be like, am I really not seeing myself with clear lenses or is this like, you know, a broken lens that I'm seeing, like a broken mirror. And all I see is kind of the shattered image of myself, as opposed to like what my husband actually sees. Um, And it's good, again, just to get other perspectives of things and to be able to, again, have a reality check when it comes to body image. But I think another thing to consider is where does, where does it start? Like, and I, Reference this before, but where does that body image start? Where did they start to place value on the image of themselves as opposed to of the feeling of themselves? And where did that like slippery slope kind of happen? And then what kind of pushed it in one way or the other? So to be able to have a conversation of what do you like when you look in the mirror, what do you see? And go there with them. And, and then as a coach, it's kind of our job too, to be honest with them and be like, well, here's what I see. Like I see amazing development in your shoulders and I see a vibrant skin color and a huge smile on your face now. And like go through what you actually see. And because you're the, you're the professional, you're the health professional and they're trusting you, right? Like they're trusting you with a lot. And I think that that's important for them to also ask you, but to ask their friends too. ask, ask people they see in the gym. Don't be nervous to have your clients ask other people, how do you think I look? Because it's probably different than what they actually think they look like. Right. I love that. Actually. Um, I think it was like, on on youtube i think the channel is called try guys where they did something kind of similar where it was like okay well i want to look like this guy and you know i want to you know be leaner here and all their stuff so they actually had a like a professional photoshop them exactly to what they were describing they wanted their ideal physique to look like Mm. and what was amazing was once they actually saw it, they were all like, oh, you know what? That's maybe not quite what I want. Mm -hmm. You know, the way that they wanted to see themselves versus the way they actually look right now, you know, it's amazing that, you know, we can, we can have this really high bar set for, you know, I want to have Ryan Reynolds abs and I want to have Hugh Jackman's shoulders or you know I want to have Shakira's hips and I want to look like Dolly Parton up top like whatever that is you know it's amazing that we overlook just where we're at and where we've come from sometimes you yeah know what I, mean? I think it's important too to ask clients you know when they come with goals 
if it if you find that their goals are very much drawn into their physical self, if you could ask them, okay, that's I hear what you want to look like. Um, how do you want to feel? And yeah. like go there with them and see, okay, so this is how you want to feel and this is how you want to look. Now, my job is to help you to have these things kind of align. And if they can, that's fantastic. If they don't, where do we want to put more emphasis in? Because what's yeah. more important to you? And why is that more important to you? Totally. I've um I've done like video feedback, like the mm -hmm. check-ins that we send. Um, but I'll like pull up their yes. current picture and like their past picture or whatever. And I know that progress pictures for a lot of my lifestyle clients is like very, very hard. Um, I mean, it's hard regardless, but it can be really scary. It's like, well, I don't want to take that picture until I feel better or until I'm here or whatever. And it's like, well, especially if our goal is to gain muscle or improve your health markers or, mm -hmm. you know, like these types of things, it's like, well, we also, you know, can pull up those pictures and, and look at, like you were saying, Danica, um, I actually see development in your shoulders and your back, or like I've had progress pictures where it's like, wow, their posture is like night and day. And I don't know about y'all, but like posture and gait is like so important to me. I'm like, oh my God, look at you. You're standing up straight, like right. that type of thing, or like glute gains, like those mm -hmm. types of things. It's it's very small. And sometimes you might not see it because you also look at yourself every day and we pick ourselves apart uh, all the time, but having progress pictures. And then somebody, like you said, like have us as your coach be like, I see this, right. I see your skin is so much better. Your posture is better. Um, like whatever that is. Um, like, I mean, that just helps. Yeah, an unobjective set of eyes being put on you sometimes is exactly what you need or just seeing things from an entirely different perspective. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten the check-in from someone of, I just don't feel like I'm making any changes. I feel like I'm letting you down. And whenever I show them like, well, hang on, look at what I'm seeing. And I do the screen share and show them like, the cool thing for us, right, is the way the cl our clients check in we actually get graphs so we can show the graph line of, look, your calories have gone up and your waist has stayed stable or, hey, the calories have come down, but also we see the waist has gone down, the weight has gone down. But then we also get these people that go through a complete body recomp through a reverse diet and okay, maybe you did put on three or four pounds, but whenever I show, look, this is where we're at at the end of the dieting phase, right? And this is where we're at now. Look at the shoulders, look at the back, look at the, for, for my guys, I like to really focus on thickness in the mid back, like that, that mid trap, that mid lat area, lower lat, like that's where, you know, if guys can see muscle development there, it now goes, well, wait a minute. Yeah. So what my waist measurement went up a little bit, but because of proportions, the V taper is still there because your shoulders got broader and they're sitting out further. So I've seen that time and time again, where look, the scale is up five, 10 pounds from where we ended a dieting phase, but visually look, let's put eyes on it. Let's do the eye test. And you look just as good now as what you did 10 pounds ago. The difference is that your hormones are better. The difference is that your libido is better. Your mood is improved. You're stronger than what you were 10 pounds ago. So why is the scale suddenly the one that we're heavily investing in? Right. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, we've been talking for quite some time. I feel like we've like covered a whole lot. Is there anything Danica that you feel like we missed on or that you want to touch on as like a just finishing topper to our beautiful podcast? Oh man, we did touch on a lot, which is amazing. I think another quick thing is making sure that you are creating a good relevance around you. Meaning if, I don't know how to like articulate this well, but if you, so if losing weight and dropping weight and being really thin 
is something that is kind of holding you back from achieving health goals that you have, don't make that relevant in your life all the time. Meaning you wouldn't really, you should not, or you probably should choose otherwise, not having a bunch of competitors around you all the time or having the vocabulary and the constant talk of weight loss and restrict this. And if that's something that you're kind of struggling with, don't make that relevant in your life. So try to decrease the uh, the amount of times you're hearing that and you're surrounded by that and stuff like put, social media detox and stuff exactly like that. right yeah. and to be able to put into place other types of support like having good conversation with people like hey I'm going through a reverse diet how are you how have you been doing in a reverse diet and being able to conversate with other people that are kind of experiencing the same thing in a positive light um, being able to, it could be asking your coach, do you have any articles that you recommend? Like our job too, is to educate, right? So to be, there's a lot of times that I will send a good podcast or a good listen, like to get them to understand hormonal health and why eating dietary fat is really important for us. Like I'll send little, little helping things for them to make that conversation relevant in their life where it's a good positive interaction. So then it starts to kind of soak into building that strong narrative and better pathways for their thoughts to go. Um, so that's just another thing. And being able to kind of pick and choose your support, right? If people aren't supporting you and you find that they're kind of limiting you or hindering your progress in any way, then choose a different support. That's okay. Like, it's okay to like have people support you for shows, but if you find that they don't support you in reversing, maybe you don't interact with them as much. Yeah, that's so important too. I like the education piece as well, because I think we've, we've talked about on this podcast about sharing your goals and like we did it with um, like social gatherings. And if we're in a fat loss phase, how do you like to deal with social gatherings? But like, this is the exact same, like share your goals with your friends, your family, whatever that support system is. Um, be like, this is my phase right now where I'm really focusing on health or whatever it is, like own it, like own your goal, right. yeah. stand up for that goal. Like be like, yeah, strong, proud, whatever it is. I love that, that education piece. Like, yeah, actually my hormones are actually in the tank and I actually need to eat this food here, but I'm like serving my body where it needs to be right now. And my long-term goal of X, Y, Z and like own that truth and moving forward with that can either like really help with your support system or you're right. If that support system isn't supporting you in that where it is right now, and that's fine. That's our own choice. That's too bad for them. And you can choose something else. And educating your support. You talked about that, but if people aren't in say just the competitive world, if they don't really know what you're doing, then chances are that they, they don't really know how to talk to you. Like they're, what are they going to be like? Oh my gosh, it's so good seeing you. You've put on weight. Like nobody really does that because yeah. they're like, do I say this? Do I not say this? Like, I don't know if this is a good thing. So when you kind of educate the people around you, your family, and I've had to do this too, like, especially with my brothers who I love, like, I'll be like, guys, my butt's got to grow. Like it was great on stage, but man, oh man, we got to fill out these pants. And they'll be like, all right, sis, like I got you. And every time I see you, I'll remind you like you're looking great because you're putting on weight. And that's what I need. Like that helps me to feel confident in the goals that I have and to remind myself like, okay, I got support. Like no matter what I do, if I educate people around me and they know that it's healthy for me, then they're going to support me but I need to educate them to, for them to even give me that support. I love that. I think that's great. Like just sharing it and getting them on board. And like, we've talked about this a lot in a couple of the podcasts we've done as a group with saying like, this is important to me mm. and like making sure that the people you're going to surround yourself with know that so that, cause they're going to want to support you like nine times out of 10, they're going right. to be like, all right, let's roll, you know? And so having that, conversation can not only help them with it, but it can help make it easier for you to show up for yourself in those situations too, instead of thinking like, I need to fit into this mold that they think I am right now, or like, I don't want to be different or something when you can just own it and go with it. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. And finding that support system, like unpopular opinion, I know in 2022, everybody goes into the gym and they just want to put their headphones on and be left the F alone. And I get it. Like we're all busy. We all want to just get our workout done because we're all there for us. But, you know, whenever you do have those couple of people that you are going to organically meet in the gym, you know, mention to them like, yeah, you know, I'm excited. I'm focusing on, uh, on building my strength. I'm focusing on, you know, getting my metabolism up. And those are going to be some of the most supportive people as well. You know, like I've got those handful of people that, yeah, I mostly work out at my garage gym, but whenever I go into the crunch near us, like, it's cool to know I'm going to see my buddy, Adam, and he's going to be like, Phil, how's the PRs coming along? Like, that is awesome. That is great that you know, people are going, Hey, I remember you said this was your goal. How are you working towards it? Just like, you know, if my best friend, you know, whenever he was going to uh, wrap up his bachelor's in nursing, I would ask him, Hey, how is nursing school going? How's, how's the online classes going? Because I care about him and it's his goal. Remember, people around you are going to do the same thing. And if they don't, screw them. Do you really care what they think? Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for joining us today, Danica. Thanks for having me. I love this. Uh, Yeah. Um, Well, and if you've stuck with us for this long, thank you for listening. Um, But I think that this is a really good episode. I think... um, you know, it can be scary when we're gaining weight and talking about, you know, our own personal struggles, um, as well as how we work with clients. I think there's lots of like really fantastic, tangible things that people who are listening can take away from this podcast. So leave a review and like, and subscribe and all that jazz. Now that we're on YouTube, um, whenever this will be released, I don't know. Um, but you know, if, you're looking for any of us. We're all available on um, Instagram and I feel like Facebook, but who the heck uses Facebook now? So just Instagram <laughs> um, and yeah, follow our, the Pro Physique code. Yeah. And our emails are all pretty simple. It's just our first name at prophysique.com. So just always keep that in mind. If you've got questions about this stuff, you know, send one of us an email. If you go, man, you know, I really, feel like I've got some issues that I need to work on developing myself. You know, Danica's right there, Christina, Jess, myself, we're here to help you guys out. Um, and I'm also here to drop some mad dad jokes and Please. random facts. So random fact, I'll start off with that. Um, in the book, Good Night Moon, did you know that they are actually changing the clock with every single page? And it takes approximately 70 minutes to get little baby bunny to bed. How freaking accurate is that crap huh. i knew that the clock changed i yep, did take, know i did take know that. 70 minutes to get the little bunny to bed i'm gonna go look i've never noticed that <laughs> good night moon is like my favorite book that was like a pretty epic one that i found um but i love that um did you know that if you boil the funny bone it becomes a laughing stock <laughs> that's humorous uh, bum, bum. love it i'm gonna tell my five-year-old that one she's gonna bring that one to school it's so layered i love it <laughs> it, it is. is so layered so many pieces so many. So many. that's a good one okay well thanks for listening guys and uh yeah that's that's it that's a wrap that's a wrap thank you guys bye friends bye